If I mess up, do I just keep going or do I back keep up? Going. Keep going, okay. <laughs> Yeah, genre is never as distinct as the marketplace or the publishers want it to be. They're, you never write just horror, just science fiction, just fantasy, just western, just erotica. If you write a western, then you're gonna have action scenes in there, you're gonna have scary moments in there, you're gonna have a love story in there. The distinction that publishers and booksellers and critics want is largely just so they can put things in the right categories or on the right shelf for the consumer to buy, of mm. course. But um, when I write, I don't think um, this is horror, so there's not gonna be a love story. I don't think this is romance, so there's not gonna be anything scary. Uh, I think I wanna tell a good story, and so I'm gonna draw from every genre I can and put it on a palette and mix it all together. And hopefully that'll resonate with the reader, and hopefully they recognize what's going on too. I mean, you know, we were talking about Jeremy Robert Johnson. Jeremy Robert Johnson is a leader of this, really. He's, he's a person who mixes everything together and he swir he doesn't just throw it with his finger he's just like a mixer and he makes it splatter everywhere you know and it's it's really wonderful reading his stuff and it's it's nice reading his stuff because of everything he splatters on the walls and what he's splattering on the walls is literary conventions basically and genre and i want to do that too i want to i want to be like jeremy i guess <laughs> <laughs> literature does raise awareness Awareness, I don't know if I'd say awareness, it's almost like sensitivity, you know? It's like um, what, what reading a story does, reading a novel does, is it works out our empathy muscles, you know? And I'm not sure if they're up here or down here, I don't know where they are, but they're, they're somewhere. And, um, and it allows us to, to look at the world from someone else's point of view. And that can be another culture, it can be another age, it can be another gender, there, there's so many different viewpoints to look at a thing from. And in my own work, my default setting is always American Indian. And within that, it's always Blackfeet. And I hope that other, specifically younger Blackfeet, might find my stuff or find my stuff as a gateway to other stuff that is gonna make them feel less alone, you know? I, I really feel like that's what stories do, is they, they make us feel less alone. And when I'm writing a piece, I feel less alone because I know other people are going to get the same feelings and thoughts that I'm having while writing this. And I'm not saying literature is like a, a wall against loneliness, but it's a path out of loneliness anyways, you know? You know, almost in North America, I feel like the identity is less American and it's more like you live in the West and so you're Western. You live in Texas and so you're Texan. You live in the Northeast and so you're a New Englander. And if you live in the South, you're Florida, Arkansas, and that's a whole different mess, you know? But, um, but um, it's, I think it's hard to say, for me anyways, it's hard to say American and have that mean a homogenous thing, you know? Because America is probably four or five different spaces at least. And, but then if you drop into Texas, West Texans and East Texans are totally different, <laughs> you know? So, so it, 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 it like there's fractals, it goes littler and littler and littler. And then like people who live in South Houston are different than people who live in North Houston, you know? <laughs> You know, with, with Jade Daniels and My Hunters of Chainsaw, I'm really lucky that when she was in, when she was a kid, 11, 12 years old, that what she found that saved her life were slasher films. Because if she would have found tennis or being a car mechanic, then I'd, I'd be out of luck because I don't know that kind of stuff. But I know slasher films. I know slasher films inside out. I've been watching them since I was, since I was 11 or 12. And I watch all of them. And cinema has been very important to me as a writer. I think it really has kind of, programmed how I see things in my head and not just me I think the whole 20th century has been programmed by cinema because when we think of our memories it's almost like we see them on a screen as a flashback you know and I don't think we're ever going to be the same since cinema started I think that has permanently changed who we are how we think everything and specifically to the slasher that's the slasher grew up at the movie theater now there's a lot of slasher novels 30 years ago, 40 years ago, there were just novelizations, you know, of Friday the 13th novels, Halloween novels. Mm. And I would read those all and love them, of course, because I was getting behind the scenes and seeing the Jason's head and Michael's head. But um, I'm thrilled that slasher novels are happening now. And the, the, the mountain we're having to get over to write slasher novels is how do we incorporate all of these cinematic techniques and conventions 
onto the page because it's different. Jump scares don't work the same, mm. and ang like camera angles don't work the same, and so we're having to find workarounds to do that, and it's really exciting because I feel like we're forging into new territory and having to discover new things. You know, there's something new around every corner. People think the slasher is kind of formulaic and tired, but I don't think it is at all. I think it's super exciting. I think we're just discovering new things every time we write one. I, the last book I read is by Catherine Arden, A-R-D-E-N. It's called The Warm Hands of Ghosts. It comes out next year, I believe. I read it for a blurb, and it's a historical fantasy set in World War I over in, I think it's in France, a part of France. And it's fantasy, but it's also horror. Like I was saying, the genres mix. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's got a devil, a demon in it, but it's, and it's got all these historical aspects. Like she, she uses the terminology and the vocabulary of like 1914. And that's totally new to me. I had to look up so many words and terms, and that was wonderful. I love to learn when I read too. But um, yeah, that's the most recent book I read, and it's a favorite book as well. Pues muchísimas gracias, Steven. Ha sido Thank un you. Placer hablar Thank you very much. It was great. Thank you very much. Hmm.